I know tier lists are crap, and I know that it's almost impossible to be objective. That's why I took a different approach. I created this spreadsheet with all the possible weapon combinations and 5 important metrics. Then I sent this spreadsheet to several veteran players and experienced guild members on their respective main weapons, as well as few of my Throne of Liberty friends to also get data from a casual player perspective. After they would fill out the spreadsheet, an average number from 1 to 5 would appear in the last column, 5 being the best and 1 being the worst. Then I analyzed their inputs, took their average results for each build and ran another average formula to get the final tier list. This way I ensured that subjective opinions of individuals would not have a high impact on the final result, as I had around 15 to 20 players participate, all having different knowledge and experience with the game. I don't want to bore you too much with all the numbers, formulas and details, so I created this simple tier list design that is easy to understand. But before going into it, a quick disclaimer. This tier list is for every PvP content with maxed out best in slot gear and skills. The tier list design works differently compared to the PvE tier list I made. In PvP it is different when it comes to which weapon you are holding in your main hand, as you can most definitely hold a dagger while using skills from your ranged offhand weapons. The only thing you lose is the long range damage from basic attacks. I also won't be including two of the same weapons as it is not viable and would require a lot of knowledge and skill to successfully pull off. Crossbow Dagger is extremely strong in any form of small scale PvP, while it excels in picking off low HP targets during big zerg fights, Dagger allows it to close the distance fast, get the kill and run away with incredible movement speed, while Stealth allows for getting in on the kill or running to safety. Dagger also brings a very much needed evasion, it is in the S tier. Crossbow Greatsword can be played the same way as the Dagger, where it provides more damage and protection but at the cost of mobility and speed. Greatsword is very reliant on connecting with the stun to set up for the kill and doesn't have a long range dash. In skilled hands it can be an amazing in small scale PvP, but as it isn't as great compared to Dagger in large scale PvP, it goes into A tier. Crossbow, Longbow, Staff, Wand and Sword wouldn't offer as much in terms of the killing potential and damage, as the crossbow relies on the mid-range and being quick on its feet. All three long-range weapons in the offhand offer quite a decent AoE capabilities for large-scale PvP, but due to lack of important CC and passives, it would get run over in small-scale PvP. All three combinations go into B tier, while Sword just simply doesn't make you tanky enough to run in the front line and the damage is quite lackluster so it goes into C tier. Dagger crossbow works the same way as crossbow dagger. It honestly doesn't matter which weapon is held in the hands as you will do the exact same rotation with both. Extreme killing potential in small scale, high focus on picking off low HP targets in large scale PvP and all the benefits of a dagger makes it S tier. Dagger plus greatsword is the ultimate full melee combination that relies on one thing, dash on the target chain CC with a greatsword, unleash the full burst and every single target will be 100 to 0 in almost an instant. It completely destroys every single combination in small scale PvP, but can potentially struggle in large scale PvP due to reliance on hitting all CC and unleashing burst before you get CC'd or killed by 10 other players nearby. It's a one trick pony combination that goes into A tier. Dagger, Longbow, Staff and Wand can most definitely be played the same as if the dagger would be the offhand weapon. You would be losing basic attack range with dagger in your hands, but you can still excel in long range efforts. And all the weapons become extremely potent at dishing out high damage from range, engaging melee on low HP targets and having very much needed evasion, stealth and mobility. They are very strong in large scale PvP, but could struggle in some cases of small scale PvP if fought against melee assassins or crossbow players. That's why all three combinations are in A tier. Dagger, Sword and Shield is one of the three incredibly strong combinations for frontline tanking and causing havoc in the enemy backline. Sword and Shield is incredibly tanky and with the addition of Dagger it also gets evasion, mobility and damage. It is literally a walking fortress that can solo the enemy backline of ranged squishies and get away with it. It excels in small scale PvP, but it can literally tank a full guild for several long seconds. It is rightfully in the S tier. Greatsword Crossbow is essentially the same as Crossbow Greatsword. 
it can be played the same way as a dagger, where it provides more damage and protection, but at the cost of mobility and speed. Greatsword is very reliant on connecting with a stun to set up for the kill and doesn't have a long range dash. In skilled hands, it can be amazing in small scale PvP, but as it isn't as great compared to dagger in large scale PvP, it goes into A tier. Greatsword dagger is the ultimate full melee combination that relies on one thing. Dash on the target, chain CC with a greatsword, unleash the full burst and every single target will be 100 to 0 in almost an instant. It completely destroys every single combination in small scale PvP, but can potentially struggle in large scale PvP due to reliance on hitting all CC and unleashing bursts before you get CC'd or killed by their other players nearby. It is a one trick pony combination that goes into A tier. Greatsword, Longbow, Staff and Wand simply doesn't offer anything of value in any form of PvP that complements the range capabilities of three weapons. It also isn't going to be of much help in small scale PvP versus melee attackers as a greatsword not paired with a dagger cannot deal any significant damage. It also doesn't offer the very much needed mobility and escape tools for squishy long range combinations. All three are going into C tier. Greatsword plus sword and shield is the ultimate full frontline unkillable and unmovable unit that is equipped with killing of squishes in the backline. It cannot as effortlessly engage the enemy backline, but it can soak up enough damage and force enemy DPS to target you, while your DPS cleans up the backline. It is also unkillable in small scale PvP, where it can actually do a lot of damage with the greatsword burst. It is very much needed combination in every form of PvP, so it goes in S tier. Longbow, crossbow, greatsword and sword simply do not do anything for long range capabilities. Crossbow requires mid-range and a lot of mobility, Greatsword doesn't allow you to get close enough to unleash the burst, and Sword doesn't offer nearly enough protection to be the frontline, even if you played Longbow as a healing support weapon. All three combinations go into C tier. Longbow, Dagger and Staff are two very different combinations and builds. Dagger allows you to be a long-range assassin that can go melee to finish the kill while keeping the range. It provides the needed evasion and mobility while boosting damage with increased critical hit. It excels in small scale PvP, but can fall short to melee attackers and crossbows, and it can provide quite a decent AoE damage for large scale PvP. On the other hand, Staff makes it the ultimate glass cannon with almost infinite range and AoE capabilities. It is incredible in large scale PvP, but kind of falls short in small scale PvP, where you literally have no defensive capabilities. So you literally have to throw everything at the target and hope it's enough, or you are dead. With all of this, both combinations are going into A tier. Longbow plus wand is the ultimate healing machine, which can also deal quite a significant damage with only a few skills. Instead of explaining why it is in S tier, I will let you watch this short video. Staff plus crossbow doesn't really complement each other. Staff must utilize long range, AoE damage and burst, while crossbow is a mid range weapon that requires mobility. This combination can be strong in small scale PvP as crossbow can burst any target down, but it is also weak to enemy melee assassins with equal amount of burst. Staff does well in large scale PvP where crossbow can't really help that much, so this goes into B tier. Staff dagger is the main combination you will see on the kill leaderboards, and it is very simple. High burst potential, massive AoE damage, long range, paired with everything dagger offers makes it a very strong pick for any kind of PvP content. It could have problems dealing with melee assassins and crossbow players, so it goes into A tier. Staff Longbow is the ultimate glass cannon combination. Full range, high burst, high AoE damage that excels in large scale but falls short in small scale PvP due to zero mobility, zero protection, and the only hope is bursting the enemy down before you get bursted. It's a high risk, high reward combination that requires knowledge of terrain and usage of the almost infinite range. It goes into A tier. Staff plus Greatsword and Sword do not provide almost anything that complements the high burst and long range of Staff. Greatsword doesn't offer enough mobility and survivability, while Sword doesn't offer enough defense and protection to be the frontline. It can still do damage in large scale due to massive AoE, but in small scale PvP you wouldn't be utilizing the range enough to have full use of Greatsword burst and stuns. Both combinations are going in C tier. Staff Wand in both the DPS build and healing support build provide excellent value for PvP content. 
either high AoE capabilities combined with Wands AoE CC can decimate any group of players, while healing build just makes it invaluable to any group. In small scale you have enough survivability tools with defensive CC and heals while you can counter it with burst damage. It goes into S tier. Sword and Shield plus Crossbow, Longbow and Staff should be avoided and not played at all in any PvP content. None of the weapons make it tanky enough to be frontline, while none of the three weapons can deal enough damage on their own, without being complemented with what Sword and Shield offers. All three combinations are C tier. Sword and Shield plus Greatsword, Dagger and Wand are the three ultimate frontline tank options. With Greatsword you are literally unkillable, unmovable fortress that can deal a lot of damage when catching a squishy DPS out of position, with a high burst potential. Dagger offers mobility, damage and very much needed evasion, which can tank significant amounts of damage at the frontline, but also wreak havoc in the enemy backline as a tanky melee assassin. And the bread and butter is the wand combination, which makes it a paladin. Literally unkillable as shown in this video, where it was being targeted by 10 plus players and surviving. All three builds are S tier. Wand plus crossbow doesn't synergize too well, but crossbow on its own can deal more than enough burst damage. Backed up by AoE CC and damage wand can bring, while also providing the healing. It lacks in the mobility and defense department, and in small scale PvP crossbow alone will not be enough to burst an enemy, so it goes into B tier. Wand Dagger is a combination that offers one of the best engagers in large scale PvP. Wand has an amazing AoE CC that lets you combine with high AoE burst damage. Paired with a lot of crit from Dagger, makes enemy groups literally explode. Dagger offers mobility evasion and damage, so it performs really well in small scale PvP. On top of self healing and stealth, it does excel in almost every PvP content. It's going into A tier just due to recent nerfs. Wand plus Longbow, Staff and Sword and Shield just speaks for itself. All three combinations can be played as support healing builds, while Paladin can literally tank 15 players attacking it at the same time. If played as a damage, it can also provide their high range, high burst and survivability to not get bursted in small scale PvP. Healing will always be a main build needed in every group PvP content, so all three combinations are going into S tier. Wand plus Greatsword simply doesn't offer anything of value in any form of PvP that complements the range capabilities. It also isn't going to be much of a help in small scale PvP versus melee attackers as a Greatsword not paired with a dagger cannot deal any significant damage. It also doesn't offer the very much needed mobility and escape tools for squishy long range combinations. Here is the summary of all the meta combinations that are considered S and A tier and here are all the B tier combinations that can be really strong in the hand of a good player, but could become a problem for the beginners. Rest of the combinations are not worth investing time and resources into, as you will only get disappointed with their underwhelming performance. You won't really have many options to build your gear for both PvE and PvP, so watch both of my tier list videos and find a build that is 8 plus tier in both PvP and PvE that you like. But who am I to tell you what to play? Just don't be a sheep, don't be a meta slave and at the end of the day play whatever you want and whatever is most fun for you. Who knows, maybe you create a new meta weapon combination. If you made it this far, you have to subscribe and watch the PvE tier list that is appearing on your screen.